dear students welcome to today's class today we are going to discuss the second unit of my greatest olympic pride in the first unit we discussed about the nationalistic feeling at berlin how hitler helped develop the nationalistic feeling what was jesse's reaction to that and what surprise was waiting for him there his introduction to lodge and what was his determination that unit we ended with some questions what happened next who become the superior and did jesse prove his superiority and these topics or these questions will be solved here as we go to the text unit text second now in this chapter we are going to discuss about jesse's performance in the trial jumps his reaction large long part or role then motivation and finally jesse's qualifying jump okay what might be the result we are sure being a negro jesse was a little angry now there is a common adage there is a common proverb an angry athlete is an athlete who will make mistakes okay sometimes what happens everything doesn't go according to our plan some external forces are there which interrupt us or interrupt our plan okay now come to the text please open the book and have a pencil or pen get ready with the notebook and book go through the text an angry athlete is an athlete who will make mistakes as any coach will tell you i was no exception on the first of my three qualifying jumps i leapt from several inches beyond the take of board for a no jump on the second jump i was even worse did i come 3000 miles for this i thought bitterly to fail in the trials and make a fool of myself working a few years from the pit i kicked disgustedly at the ground suddenly i felt a hand on my shoulder i turned to look into the friendly blue eyes of the tall german long jumper he had easily qualified for the finals on his first attempt he offered me a firm handshake just wins i am large long i don't think we have met he spoke english well though with a german twist to it <clears throat> glad to meet you i said then trying to hide my nervousness i added how are you i am fine the question is how are you what do you mean i asked something must be eating you he said proud the way foreigners are when they have mastered a bit of american slang you should be able to qualify with your eyes closed believe me i know it i told him and it felt good to say that to someone okay an angry athlete is an athlete who will make mistakes being angry usually we lose our temper we lose our coolness and by that we make mistakes we become impulsive uttejit he jachanti ebong uttejit heba dwara amar samanyatama gyan hajai deuchanti harai deuchanti so we make mistakes we are sure to make mistakes and that is the proverb that is the point spoken by any coach any trainer could say this and being an angry athlete jeshi was no exception exception means change different so no exception means no different no change means he was also similar it indicates he also made a mistake okay exception change exception change no exception means no change no different means he made the mistake he came up to the same point exact point spoken by the coach and what mistake did he make usually one athlete is given three chances in the trial 
and on the first trial Jesse made a mistake that he jumped several inches beyond the takeoff board. Suppose this was the point where he was supposed to jump from after making his run and he jumped beyond the takeoff board some inches or few inches from the takeoff board and in cricket you know when a bowler crosses the bowling mark that's a no ball immediately the umpire raises his hand no ball signals signals no ball just like that jesse made a foul jesse made a no jump and the second he was even worse he was even worse there was no improvement rather there was deterioration there was poor performance he performed very poorly in the second attempt now only one chance was left and if he failed in the third then he was out from the olympics event before that he thought bitterly he was something irritated he felt disgusted and he questioned himself he introspected he introspected he questioned his ability what did he say in his words did i come 3000 miles for this to fail in the trials and make a fool of myself he questioned himself if he had traveled 3000 miles means 3000 into 1.6 approximately 4800 kilometers from america to german to fail in the trials and prove himself to be a fool prove himself to be a fool make a fool of himself okay here is a phrase make a fool of myself or make a fool of oneself nijaku boka bali pramanita kareba kemte if you ask me a question and i will fail to answer then i will make myself a fool another example what i can say in 10th class examination one has scored 90 plus but in the first year or in 11th class if he fails to score 40% 50% like that he proved himself or he made himself a fool that means one who cannot come up to the expectation so that was the question and when this introspection comes when the questioning to self comes success automatically comes atma anushilana nijaku jete bele ami nije question kariba prashna kariba nijar samarthya bisare nijar talent bisare then we can get success working a few years from the pit i kicked disgustedly at the ground working some distance up the pit pit in the last class we discussed this is the area where one is to jump so working some distance up the pit he kicked the ground disgustedly dissatisfyingly unpleasantly and suddenly i felt a hand on my shoulder felt a hand when someone came from the back and tapped on his shoulder so he looked back i turned to look into the friendly blue eyes of the tall german long jumper who was there the tall german long jumper and he had a friendly appearance he he had his eyes friendly means there was no competitor spirit there was no competitive feeling there was no enmity there was no peter feeling okay he had easily qualified for the finals on his first attempt lars had already qualified for the finals on his first attempt and he offered me a firm handshake firm it's not firm it's not firm it's firm and r is silent means strong or hard he offered him a strong handshake or hard handshake then he introduced he introduced jesse when i'm large long I don't think we have met. He introduced by telling his name. Hi Jessie, I am Lajlan. 
and I don't think we have met, means they have not met before. Here, Jesse thought about Lajlang's English. He spoke English well, though with a German twist to it. He spoke English well, though with a German twist. What is German twist? Laj belonged to German, and when he spoke English, he spoke English with German accent, German style. We are Indians, we are Odias, and when we speak English, we also speak in Odia accent. There is always the interference or impact of mother tongue in English when one speaks English as the second language. Jekunasi Bhakti, Ingraj could Bhitya Bhasharupe Kahila Bale, Matru Hasar Prabhap Nishjathai. Glad to meet you, I said then, trying to hide my nervousness, I added, how are you? So, Lars introduced and Jesse reciprocated, Jesse responded by saying, glad to meet you. That is the common response for the introduction of a person. Lars introduced, hi, I am Jesse Wench, I am Lars Long. Lars introduced, I am Lars Long. And Jesse responded, glad to meet you. Okay, Jesse was already nervous and he was quite sure. He took care that Lodge should not know about his nervousness. So immediately he asked, how are you? Immediately Jesse asked Lodge, immediately Jesse asked Lodge how he was. I am fine, the question is, how are you? Lodge replied, I am fine. But the question is, how are you? It's just like a bouncer. Jesse wanted to hide his nervousness. But instantly, Lurz responded positively and he threw a bouncer. He questioned Jesse how he was. And here, Jesse was more nervous. What do you mean? I asked. Something must be eating you. Something must be eating you means something must be puzzling you, something must be irritating you, something must be troubling you. Here it means Lodge had been able to understand Jesse's nervous. Jesse was nervous, Jesse was tensed, Jesse had lost its temper that Lodge had been able to know. Here Jesse felt proud the way foreigners are when they have mastered a bit of American slang. What Lurz said, something must be eating you. Something must be eating you means you are irritated, you are puzzled, you are nervous. And when he spoke indirectly, it's an indirect comment. Jesse thought foreigners are proud of when they have mastered a bit of American slang. Okay, who is a foreigner here? Jesse is a foreigner to the land, German. Being an American, he was foreigner to German, Berlin. But here, language is there. American language means English. So, Lurz was foreigner to American. And it is a common thing, it's a common thing. When the non-English people, non-native English speakers, learn something about English they are proud of they feel proud of and that is what Jesse remarked Jesse commented about Lodge Lung okay here is a term mastered master we have come across in the first unit as an adjective and we know master means a teacher here master is a verb, means to gain, to learn, to learn or to get command over. Then another word is there, slang. Slang, slang usually we think what? We take it in negative sense, it's a derogatory usage, negative, rough language. But here it's not like that. It means 
American slang means American language, American idioms. It's a kind of dialect. Ukti ba pravado. Okay. You should be able to qualify with your eyes closed. Remember here, look here. What Lodz says. You should be able to qualify with your eyes closed. Why are you so nervous, Jesse? You have potency, you have talent, you have skill, and you should be able to qualify with your eyes closed. I mean, simply just close your eye, make an attempt, and you will be able to qualify. Here, Lodz has perfectly studied Jesse's talent, Jesse's ability. And to this, Jesse replies, Believe me, I know it. Believe me, I know it. I told him. And it felt good to say that to someone. When we speak about our achievement, when we speak about our credit, we usually feel proud of. We are usually proud of. And Jesse had also the same feeling. Do you understand? Okay. Now let's go to the next paragraph. For the next few minutes we talked together, I didn't tell them what was eating me but he seemed to understand my anger and he took pains to reassure me. Although he had been schooled in the Nazi youth movement, he didn't believe in the Aryan supremacy business any more than I did. We laughed over the fact that he really looked the part though. And it's taller than I, he had a lean, muscular frame, clear blue eyes, fair hair and a strikingly handsome face. Finally, seeing that I had calmed down somewhat, he pointed to the take-up board. For the next few minutes, they talked. They talked together. And what did they talk that is not mentioned here? While talking, Jesse did not tell Lodge what was eating him what was irritating him or what was the cause of his tension but Lodge had been able to understand that Lodge seemed to understand his anger why Jesse was angry perhaps Lodge had studied that and he took pain to reassure him reassure it's not reassure Reassure. No gap. Okay. It's like that. Means make comfort. Make comfort. Though the word is derived from here, root word is sure. Then assure. Then reassure. Prefixes. Okay, reassure means to make someone feel comfort, to soothe someone, to ease someone. Although he had been schooled, he had been schooled. Here another term, schooled. School. Look at the words. Schooled is a verb form, means trained, groomed. Trained or groomed. And here is the situation. He had he had been schooled. He had been schooled. Look, this is subject auxiliary and V3. This is V3. This is V3 of auxiliary verb B B3 of auxiliary verb B and this is the B3 or past participle of main verb he had been schooled subject had auxiliary verb auxiliary verb that is in past tense been is the past participle form of B verb and schooled is the past participle of principal verb that means it is in passive form b plus v3 b plus v3 is usual in passive form and this is the passive of past perfect so he had been schooled in the nazi youth movement 
Nazi. As we have already discussed, Hitler and his people, Hitler and his race or community were termed as Nazi. And Hitler was giving importance to the youth power. He was giving importance to the youth power, youth mass. So, Lodz was a part of that. But he didn't believe in the Aryan supremacy business any more than Jesse did. Lodz was a Nazi, but he did not believe in Nazi's supremacy theory. Uh, they were the Aryans, they were the superiors. He didn't believe in that. However, Jesse, being an American, believed in that aspect. That is what that is what quite surprising. Lodz was not believing that. And Jesse, who was not a part of that, believed in that maxim, believed in that principle. We laughed over the fact that he really looked the part though. By his appearance, Laj looked like a strong supporter, strong believer of Nazi's Aryan supremacy business. He looked like that, but he was not really that. And for that point, they laughed over that point. For they laughed over that decision, or they laughed over that theory or appearance. Next, that is what physical description. An installer than I, large head, tall figure, lean, muscular frame. Lean means thin, muscular, having muscles, frame its body, clear blue eyes, fair hair, white hair, and a strikingly handsome face. Look at that description. He had a lean, he was tall, and it's taller than Jesse. Lean means thin, weak and muscular body when a l a r muscular there it is adjective form it is sound as muscular otherwise it's muscle not cocky is not sounded there so frame is body clear blue eyes fair hair means white hair and handsome face not handsome but a strikingly handsome look at the word strikingly handsome means extraordinarily, exceptionally handsome. Finally, seeing that I had calmed down, I had calmed down, means cooled down. When Jesse had been cooled down and came back to his position, he pointed to the take-off board. Lutz pointed to the take-off board. What he says? Look, he said, why don't you draw a line a few inches at the back of the board and aim at making your take-off from there? You will be sure not to fall and you certainly ought to jump far enough to qualify. What does it matter if you are not fast in the trials? Tomorrow each word counts. Look, Lodge drew the attention. He pointed to the take but look here. And why don't you draw a line few inches before the take board? Before the take board. And making your take up from there, focus from there. He suggested not to focus from here, from the take up board. Don't not to focus from the take up board. Lodge suggested Jesse to draw a line a few inches before or at the back of the take up board and he suggested to focus that. What was the problem? Jesse was jumping or slipping from the take up board and here this reminds me of Alexander and Bushy Fallows. Bushy Fallows was a young wild horse. No horse person, no person was able to ride Bushy Fallows. All people failed. Everyone, they failed. And finally, Alexander being young, he came forward. And he confidently said to his father that he could control Bushy Fallows because because he had been he had been noticing he had been observing the cause of bushy fellows irritation why bushy fellows was behaving abnormally because bushy fellows shadow was in front of him and he was showing reaction to that 
Alexander Do Young he had been noticing that clearly and he came forward handled him just like that Lars had been observing Jesse Owens closely very closely and he had detected he had found the mistake so here he rectified he suggested a corrective point a corrective suggestion to draw a line few inches at the back of the takeoff and aim at making his takeoff from there then he says you will be sure not to foul suppose you jump from here and your feet slip then it will come to the takeoff so you are sure not to foul and you suddenly ought to jump far enough to qualify he will be able to qualify and another important point what does it matter if you are not fast in the trials or oh, you are worried that you won't be fast today i have jumped almost 26 feet so that is what the point of tension you think you think that you cannot be the fast one what happens today is the trial the result of the trial is not important but the result of the final is important tomorrow is what counts so how tactfully how technically large handled jesse large cold jesse first he introduced himself and pacified him by diverting his attention from that point from the jump that is what we should also do whenever we are dealing with some students those who are wayward we have to divert their attention then he suggested a corrective measure for his mistake third motivated inspired by telling that the result of the trial was not important but the result of the final how great motivator Lodge was really and we find this quality of Lodge Lung here in this paragraph now look at the last paragraph suddenly all the tension seemed about of my body as the truth of what he said hit me confidently I drew a line a pulpit behind the board and proceeded to jump from there I qualified with almost a foot to spare. Jesse was nervous and Lutz con consoled him. Lutz comforted him and when he said the truth it hit him and his tension seemed to ebb out of his body. Ebb out. Ebb out means go out. Disappear when it's about. Go out. As the truth what he said hit him. Hit means tossed him, influenced him, motivated him. He drew a line as suggested by Lodge. He drew a line a few, a full foot behind the board, full foot behind the board and proceeded to jump from there and he qualified with almost a foot to spare. With almost a foot to spare. Okay. The target Suppose this was the target to jump, to qualify, he jumped one foot plus. Now, Jesse qualified or he didn't qualify. If he qualified, that was purely for his skill, for his talent or large lungs motivation. What do you understand? What do you think? Did Lutz play a vital role in Jesse's qualifying round or Jesse qualified with his talent? And I'm sure you must be thinking that it was Lutz Lung for whom Jesse qualified. If Jesse qualified for Lutz Lung's tips, what might have been Jesse's reaction? What might have been Jesse's feeling? Could Jesse show his thanks or show his gratitude to Lodge and what might have happened in the finals the next day. Before going to the third text, I would like to give you some questions. I would like to give, give you some questions. Make down, make a note of the questions. Okay. What? First question is, first question is, what is the adage or what is 
the comment of a coach regarding an angry athlete how did jeshi fare in the trials how did he exhibit or show his irritation how or what steps did lords take to re reassure jesse did jesse qualify for the finals how what is the comment of a coach regarding an angry athlete how did jesse fare in the trials how did he exhibit or show his irritation what steps did lord take to reassure jesse did jesse qualify for the finals and if how you make an effort to write the answers and we will discuss the answers in the next class but before that i would like you to write the answers and send it to me with my uh, over my whatsapp number so that i can check them and suggest any remarks with this okay before that we will be switching over to the third unit there we have some points how did jesse show his reaction or how did jesse show his gratitude whether he showed his gratitude or not and who won the gold medal that these are the points to be discussed in the third unit and with this i conclude today's class and thank you all for having a patient listening thank you